the world is buzzing about Deepseek right now, but I feel his, his founder, Van Winfield, deserves more spotlight with mere $5.5 million investments on training and the result on par with ChatGPT-01 and also operating under the impact of the US chip sanction. He's definitely the kind of person you want to know more. I took the time diving to his personal journey and his entrepreneur path. Let's take a closer look. I'm gonna call him Liang for the rest of this video because it's easier for you guys to pronounce. Van isn't your typical founder in the world of top AI. His origin lies in quantitative finance. As the founder of High Flyer Quant, which is very important for today's discussion and the inception of DeepSeek, is a leading quant trading firm in China and is top 20 in 2024 in terms of its growth. He managed up to $100 billion in 2021. In 2024, under the structure of High Flyer, Leon officially launched the DeepSeek V2. With the pricing strategy that stunned the AI industry in China. The pricing is incredibly cheap. It's 1 RMB per million input tokens. 1 RMB, by the way, is like 15 cents. And 2 RMB per million output tokens is a mere 1% of GPT-4's turbo pricing. The aggressive pricing triggered an industry-wide price war from forcing Chinese tech giants like ByteDance, Alibaba Cloud, and and iFly Tech to lower their prices. Critics were quick to label the strategy as losing money to gain attention. For Leon, this is actually the technological advancement that has made this price possible. And also, most importantly, real tech should be accessible to everybody on the market or otherwise, what's the point of it? Many have wondered why a quantitative fund like HiFlyer would launch such a project. Leon clarified that in an interview. He said, building large language models has nothing to do with quantitative finance or trading. We established a separate company for DeepSeek for this purpose. So why does he want to build DeepSeek? Because of his desire to explore the fundamental nature of human intelligence, which he hypothesizes is deeply connected to language. He believes that human thought might simply be the process of constructing language in the brain, suggesting that human-like AGI could emerge from large language models. At the same time, Val seeks to unravel the remaining mysteries of GPT-4 by replicating its architecture. DeepSeek is conducting in-depth research to better understand the underlying principles of advanced AI systems. So, as a founder deeply entrenched in the quant finance world, managing over $100 billion in 2021, there are going to be questions and doubts because his pivot to AI seems so audacious, perhaps even rational. So, when asked about the logic behind this transition, they will candidly admit that. He said, if you're looking for commercial justification, you won't find one. Foundational research has a slow, has a low return on investment. Early investors in OpenAI didn't calcul calculate returns. They simply believed the vision. For us, the timing, capability, and opportunity aligned, making us one of the best candidates pursuing this path. Honestly, this statement has deeply resonated with me because true altruism requires sincerity and most importantly, capabilities. In this case, money. Let's take a look at his entrepreneur journey and see how he made himself a fortune. Leon is a low profile entrepreneur with little information about him available online and he rarely participates in interviews, but I still managed to find something. So born in 1985 in Guangdong province, he was admitted to Zhejiang University's electronic information engineering program at the age of 17. So Zhejiang University is a top institution in China. It's um, equivalent of the second tier of the Ivy League. Don't attack me if I, if I get this wrong, but feel free to correct me in the comment section. After earning his bachelor's degree, he pursued graduate studies in information and communication engineering. So Post-graduate years, he and his classmates, including the future co-founder Xu, discovered the potential of building stock trading plugins. They began developing these tools in their university lab, becoming one of the earliest groups in China to explore quantitative finance. By October 2016, they launched their first AI-powered stock position model using deep learning algorithms, relying on GPU technology for comput computation. Before this, the team's algorithm is primarily utilized linear models and traditional machine learning with calculation performance on CPUs. I do I want to add a point on Alexander Wang, the, the CEO of Scale AI, he had made the other day claiming that DeepSeek owned 50,000 GPUs, but it is not the truth or you're adopting the seriousness of the US chip sanction. DeepSeek likely operates with 10,000 older 100 GPUs and around 3,000 H800 GPUs purchased before the US export restrictions. So Leon and his team have placed significant emphasis on compliance. If you don't believe it, just like it. Refraining from procuring any restricted GPUs resulting in a more resource efficient approach compared to the US market resource-efficient approach where GPU usage is often seen as excessive. DeepSeek's explosive success today is definitely not fleeting effort or sheer luck because the team of the need of computing power since 2021. At that time, HiFlyer was one of the first organizations in Asia-Pacific region to acquire A100 GPUs, even earlier than some cloud service providers. At the time, many domestic providers relied on mid-tier configurations like the A10 GPU. But on the other hand, HiFlyer stood out as the only firm in the industry to amass over 10,800 chips. So it's a feat. Few others could match globally. 
And this bold decision to invest heavily in GPUs has sparked widespread curiosity because what is the kind of gut someone have to make such a move at that time? And especially you're not even an AI company. So in interviews, he dismissed the notion that it was based on complex business calculation. Instead, he attributed to a relentless curiosity for the unknown. Curiosity. So according to Leon, computing power models and data are the core drivers of AI developments. Accumulating as much computing power as possible was essential to support large-scale experiments. So as early as 2016, HiFlyer had begun leveraging AI for quantitative trading. Over time, his ambition grew beyond using computing power for trading. He started focusing on the essence of technology itself. So his curiosity drove him to seek answers to fundamental questions like what kind of paradigm can fully describe financial markets? And is there a simpler, more elegant way to express their paradigms, these paradigms? What are the boundaries of these paradigm capabilities and could they have a broader applications beyond their original purpose? As a human being on the other side of the planet, I deeply appreciate and envy a human being like this because the access towards information and data is such a privilege not everybody can enjoy. There are so many bright, bright minds out there and they're able to see other people couldn't able to perceive and the way they understand the world makes them standing in a position that all the information flow is an influx towards them. It's such an amazing experience. I would love to see that one day. What kind of company is capable of building DeepSeek and what is Van's philosophy as a founder in terms of team management? This is actually quite interesting because I do feel that because I saw that the other day Elon Musk tweeted that um, didn't care what company you go to or the school you went to, um, show us the code. I do feel there are some parallel between Leon and Elon in terms of hiring principles. Talent for large model startups is indeed scarce. Some investors have noted that many ideal candidates are like concentrated in a lab of giants like OpenAI. So would Leon consider recruiting such talent from these companies? And if the goal is the short-term results, hiring experienced professionals is undoubtedly the right approach. But for the long-term success, he believes that experience is far less critical than foundational skills, creativity, and passion. From his perspective, there's no shortage of suitable candidates domestically. Philosophy is straightforward. It doesn't have to be someone who has done it before to be the one who can do it. Because he himself had no quant finance background when he started High Flyer, which is a testament to believe that the right mindset trumps prior experience. And most of the Deep Seek's core team members are recent graduates or professionals with less than two years of experience. And he explained, he said, the idea that only those with experience can succeed is flawed. Our core sales team, for instance, came from non-traditional backgrounds. One was a German mechanical expert trader. The other was a back office coder at, the, at a securities firm. And today they built a direct sales model that outperforms competitors relying on intermediaries. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Let's wrap up today's neutral observation and silent admiration of DeepSeek with one last question. When asked how to distinguish between believers and opportunists in AI, Leon replied, believers were here before the wave and they'll remain after it subsides. They'll invest in long-term infrastructure by GPUs in bulk and commit to sustained research, not fleeting trends.